Welcome to Story Visions. This is the story of the miracle of the poinsettia. And the author is unknown. This story has been told all around the world for more than 100 years. So sit back and enjoy. The year was 1834 and it was in a very, very small town in northern Mexico. And it was the day before Christmas. And in this small town, all the people in this village spent their day looking and thinking about what gift they could take to the baby, to the Christ child, to the crush for Christmas Eve service. And in this particular town, admittance into church for the Christmas Eve service was gained by bringing the baby a gift. But not any ordinary gift, a special gift. A gift from the heart. A gift that you had made. A gift that you had toiled over. A gift that showed a bit of your labors. Something that meant you were giving a bit of yourself to the Christ child on this Christmas Eve. And so all the people in the community were working and laboring to find that perfect gift. That included two little girls, Juanita and Maria, who decided they would meet at the, at the front of the market on Christmas Eve day to go and look for their perfect gifts. Maria! Maria! said Juanita. I am so excited! I've earned it. I've worked so hard. I've worked for Mama all these months in her stall, cleaning and helping and unpacking and packing all her items, and I've earned five pesos. And I know that'll be enough to find a perfect gift. Oh, Juanita, that's amazing, said Maria. I am so excited for you, and I will be honored to help you go pick out that gift. But I'm also a little sad because I have nothing to give the Christ child. Well, said Juanita, who was always very practical, I'm sure that if we think about it, we can find something for you to give. There's always that special gift for the baby Jesus. And so the girls began to go up and down and up and down and up and down the stall aisles, looking and looking for the perfect gift that was only five pesos that Juanita could use to buy a gift for the Christ child. Finally, they stopped at a booth of wooden carvings, and there, near the very front, was a little tiny bird. Juanita picked up the bird, and she put it in her hand, and she looked at it. It was amazing. You could see its little tiny eyes and its beautiful little beak. Each of the feathers or each of the wings was carved by hand. But the thing that was most special of all was that its tail had beautifully carved feathers. Why, you could see the detail of each feather and they looked as though they would float away. And more amazing still, the price was just five pesos. Juanita dug in her little purse and she handed the five pesos over to the shop manager who gave her the bird. She carried it very carefully in her hands and cupped her hands just like this so that nothing would happen to that special gift. Juanita didn't say anything to Maria, but secretly, a part of her wished she could take that bird home and just put it on the shelf in her room so she could look at it every day. It was so very beautiful. But then she knew that was the kind of gift that you gave to the baby Jesus, that which was the most beautiful that you had worked so hard for. Juanita, I have an idea, said Maria. The 
feathers. The feathers on your beautiful bird. Why, why, they're so gorgeous. And I know if we walk, and if we walk around through the countryside, around our village, I know I can find some beautiful feathers and take them to the Christ child. And we can set the feathers down and put your bird on top of it. And it would be a beautiful gift. <gasps> ah, said Juanita. It'd be like giving them something together. That would be awesome. And so the girls began to walk out of town and they began to look around, Juanita holding her hands and cupping them like this so as not to lose that beautiful carved bird. They walked around through the country and they looked and they looked and they looked and they looked for a feather, a rock, a something that was beautiful that they could put at the crushed side beside Juanita's beautiful little bird as the perfect gift from Maria. But after hours and hours, they still had found nothing. Finally, it was time for dinner, and the two girls had to part. I'll see you at the church, said Juanita. I don't think I should even go, said Maria. I, I have nothing. Nothing. I will not be able to go in. It's hopeless. It's never hopeless, said Juanita. Come, I'm sure we'll find something. Something will happen. Just come, please, Maria, please come. Please promise me you'll come. All right, I promise, said Maria. But her heart was not in it. The girls met that night at the church. The line was oh so long, and they got into the long line heading into the church of all the people from their village who were coming to leave the gifts for the baby Christ child and then sit down and enjoy the Christmas Mass. Juanita got in line, and Maria stepped in front of her. If you just step in front of me, I know we'll, we'll look around and we'll see something. We'll have to. Because you have to be able to go, said Juanita, who was ever practical, and was still cupping her hands and holding that little carved bird so carefully. The woman in front of them had a huge, huge bouquet of flowers, and she carried it very carefully. It was beautiful. It made Maria feel happy and yet oh so sad, because she still had nothing. But she kept walking and looking and walking and looking as though something might just spring up out of the sidewalk, just like that. And as she hit the steps of the church, some of the leaves from that beautiful arrangement dropped on the ground. And Maria looked down. And they were so pretty and bright and shiny green. And she thought, oh! They will make a perfect little nest for my friend Juanita's bird. And she leaned down and she picked them up and she put them in her handkerchief because although she felt they would make a perfect nest, she was a little embarrassed that her gift was so meager and so small. They headed into the church and the woman laid down her beautiful, beautiful bouquet as she looked at the live nativity and the cute baby who was depicting the baby Jesus in the crush. Then it was Juanita's turn, or Maria's turn. She looked around. She tried to make sure nobody was watching, and she took her handkerchief, and she opened it up to take out the little leaves, to put them down, to make a nest for her friend Juanita's carved bird. And when she did, and she opened up that handkerchief, there was not the leaves, but a beautiful red flower. Oh, 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 said Maria. And Juanita, who had watched her pick up the leaves, gasped also. Soon everyone around them looked to see what the girls were gasping about. And before you know it, as you know, how messages spread. 
The message had spread throughout the church like wildfire about the little leaves that the little girl had put in her handkerchief and how when she opened it up at the creche, because her heart was so loving and caring, rather than leaves, a beautiful, beautiful red flower like those that grew outside in front of the church appeared. She put it down at the creche, and Juanita put her little tiny carved bird right beside her friend's beautiful red flower. Well, the miracle spread throughout northern Mexico, far and wide, how the little girl had brought in a leaf, and when she opened it up, it was no longer a leaf, but a beautiful red poinsettia blossom. And to that point, poinsettias had only grown outside the church in very large bushes, sometimes four to five feet tall. But no one had brought them inside until that Christmas Eve. From that day forward, all of the churches in northern Mexico decorated their sanctuaries and the fronts with beautiful red poinsettias. And the word spread. And our ambassador to Mexico, Ambassador John Poinsett, who was appointed in 1829, heard about this wondrous, wondrous miracle and saw how beautiful the red poinsettias were in the churches. And he took the plants back to the United States but alas, they would only bloom for one, two, or three days. It wasn't until almost 1965 when scientists and botanists worked together to hybrid, hybrid and perfect poinsettias so that they can last much longer in our cold, cold climate in the United States and other countries indoors. And so now, when we go into our churches and into our homes, we can enjoy and remember the miracle of the poinsettia and how that first poinsettia appeared on that Christmas Eve night and started the whole lovely tradition. <music>